Hey guys, it's Dan here. And what I'm going to be cooking for you today is going to be some blackened chicken. Um, chicken strips, chicken tenders, whatever you want to call them. Um, I had four chicken breasts. I cut them up. I ended up getting 11 strips out of them. Um, I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to use my 12-inch lodge. Uh, I'm going to be also using my Coleman little butane stove here on the back of the houseboat. Finally out here at the beautiful lake. A bunch of little bluegills swimming around back here. Gorgeous day, show you a quick, easy meal. Well, let's get to it. All right, guys, uh, right here's my strips. Got them in this bowl right here. I'm gonna just put a little bit of oil on them. Normally what I do is I'll melt some butter to put on them instead of the oil. But unfortunately, we just now got back out to the lake. I looked in the fridge and I didn't realize I didn't have a stick of butter. Uh, but just a little bit of oil on those before I get my hands all dirty and nasty. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start up my stove, get my pan preheating. All right. Now I'm just going to make sure all these get a good oil bath. And the blackening seasoning I'm going to be using today is a St. Elmo's Steakhouse blackening seasoning. I've never tried it before. I've uh, made my own blackening seasoning before. Um, I really like the Zatarain's blackening seasoning. Uh, but the wife got this, and I figured I'd give it a try. She actually wanted me to try it on some salmon, but I figured I'll test it. I didn't get all the fat off, evidently. I thought I trimmed these better. Good thing about being out the lake, I can just toss that. All right, wipe my hands a little bit. I do have some hot soapy water in a bucket over here. I'll wash my hands real good here in just a few minutes. Then I'm just going to put a very liberal amount of this. Because I want it coated all the way around. And like I said, if I can center it to the camera... St. Elmo's Steakhouse, black and seasoning. Now we're just going to keep tossing this until everything gets real good. Hey, big fish just jumped. I wasn't able to see what it was, but it's making me want to get my fishing pole out. All right, wipe my hands again. Put some more of this on here. Like I said, I want everything coated. And I am not sure. I've never even tried this. I don't know how spicy it's going to be. Like I said, I really like the Zatarans, but the wife picked this up and I said, heck with it. We're going to try it. All right, I'm going to let this just sit here for a few minutes while I go wash my hands. They are filthy right now. I'm going to wash them real good with hot soapy water, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I got two pair of tongs here, guys. Uh, got this on a medium-high heat. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit more because I want this screaming hot. The reason I have two pair of tongs is... One's for the raw chicken going in and then flipping. And then when I go to pull it out on the plate, I use a clean pair because I don't want any cross-contamination or anything. So, let's see. It's a little windy today. Well, let me give it just another minute before I put some oil in. Because like I said, I want this screaming hot. Now, if you guys don't have a cast iron pan, you can do it in any pan. Um, the reason I like the cast irons for two reasons. No matter how hot I get it, I don't think I'm going to warp it on this little uh, camp stove. And number two, when I put the chicken in, even though it's been sitting out for probably 15, 20 minutes now at room temperature, uh, or getting up to room temperature, 
it's still going to lower the temperature in the pan but cast iron retains its heat so well it will not do it to the cast iron like it would in a cheap aluminum pan all right i think i just saw a little wisp of smoke start coming out of there so let me get some oil in here and i'm going to make it to where there's a little pool on the bottom i'm almost going to like shallow fry these if you see that Now I'm going to let that oil heat up, and uh, once I see a, just a whisper of smoke, or maybe just the top shimmering real good, then I'll start putting this chicken in. I'm probably going to have to do this in a couple batches, um, and it's only going to take three minutes a side. And uh, these chicken strips will be done. They'll be beautiful, I hope. I've never used this seasoning, but when I've done this before, uh, actually, last time I bought the chicken tenders already cut up from the store. I didn't buy the chicken breast, but. All right. Do we have a little smoke going? Let me give it just another second. All right. This oil just now started to smoke just a hair. So it's time to put these in. And these are some big old tenders. But like I said, it'll only take about three minutes aside. All right, we'll do six on this first batch. Or, yeah. All right, while these are going, right now would be a perfect time for you guys to uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you like my video. Um, next to the su subscription button, uh, there's a little bell icon that you can hit. And uh, that will give you notifications of any time I put out a video. Um, all your support's greatly appreciated. Um, feel free to leave me comments. I try to respond to all the comments, uh, sometimes faster than others, just depending upon how life's been going. But I'm going to let these go for probably another two and a half minutes, and then I'll check and see what they look like and see if they're ready to flip. All right, well, evidently I can't count because I just told you I was putting six in in the first batch, and I only put five in. Oh, Lordy, you'd think I was filming on a Monday. But it's been three minutes, so let's see what these look like. That looks pretty. All right. And before I serve them to anybody, I am going to check them with an instant read thermometer because these are a little bit thicker than the uh, uh, chicken tenderloins or whatever your store calls them, um, which is just breast meat sliced up. But these are a little bit thicker than what you'd buy already cut up. So I'm going to give these another three minutes on this side. And then I will check them with an instant read thermometer. Because the last thing I want to do is get anybody sick. Alright, these are right at another three minutes. So let me go ahead and at least see what the other side looks like real quick. I don't want to flip them because I don't want to get a false reading. If they're not up to temperature, I'll flip them. If they're all looking good, nothing's burning. Yeah, they got a little ways to go. These being thick are three minutes aside. Although, that one's done. That thick one there in the middle's not. That thick one's not done yet. Only one that's done. All right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip them. I'm going to give them a, just a little more time. Uh, like I said, uh, the thin ones that you buy, three minutes a side is a God's plenty. I don't know if uh, I practiced, did a practice cook at the house on the gas stove. I don't know if it gets hotter than this uh little coleman camp stove does or not but 
So I'm gonna let these go just another minute or two, and then we'll check the temperature. All right, guys, I went another three or four minutes. I got roughly 10 minutes on these. And uh, they're all over 165, like that one's 174, 176, actually. So they're all done now. So I'm going to pull these off. I'm not going to bore you with watching me do my second batch. Uh, but I will tell you this, I am going to add just a tiny bit more oil in here for my second batch. And then I'll let it heat back up. And then I'll be back with a taste test. I really hope you guys are enjoying this video. I know I'm enjoying cooking for you guys. Especially seeing how I know this is going to be a good meal. And I'm on a beautiful lake right now. So let me get a little more oil in here. I'll get going on the second batch. Then I'll see y'all here in just a few. All right, just so you guys can see that I can actually count. I told you I had 11 total. I got six in this second cook, or second batch. Just want to clarify that I can count to 11. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoying this. All right, just to show you how the second batch turned out, I just temp checked these. I did five minutes on the first side, and I did uh, five minutes on the flip side. And these two in the middle are done right now. The other four are probably a minute, minute and a half away from being done. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the two center ones. And uh, these babies are done and they look beautiful, smell beautiful. All right, look how beautiful those look. I'm just going to take me a lime, if you can see that in the camera, I'm not sure. And I'm just going to squeeze some lime juice over these well, i thought i rolled that good enough to break it apart there we are it's starting to go now all right garnished up with a little bit of lime juice these bad boys are ready played up they're ready for me to eat i'll give you guys a taste test See you here in just a few. All right, guys, just finished up another wonderful cook uh, in my cast iron. This is gonna go on my cast iron Wednesday playlist. If you guys enjoy my cast iron cooking and everything, uh, check out Dee at Native Tears. I'll leave a link to her uh, in the description below. She's the one that started the uh, cast iron Wednesday cooking. Uh, look up hashtag cast iron cooking or cast iron Wednesday my bad and uh, you'll see all kinds of great videos that a lot of great people put out uh, showing you how to cook in cast iron like I said at the beginning of the video if you don't have cast iron you can still do this recipe it just the cast iron for the blackening purposes holds the heat so much better um, let's see how this tastes still a little warm I don't know if you can tell, but this is very juicy. Very. Mmm. I like that. If you've ever been afraid of trying blackening seasoning because you're afraid of it too spicy, this is not hot at all. No, no real heat. It is real good. Um, the Zatarans has a little more heat to it. And the recipe that I found for my own, which you can find a hundred of them on the internet, uh, calls for cayenne pepper and red pepper flake and some other stuff. It has quite a bit of heat. This right here, for anybody that likes good flavor but doesn't want the heat, uh, this St. Elmo's is very good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you made it to the end, it's greatly appreciated, and hopefully you all have a blessed day. Thank you very much.
That's good. 